to him and live. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank yes, you, Lord, that you gave us another chance yes, on today. Lord. Hallelujah. Um, Thank you, Lord, that we can lean on your everlasting yes, arms. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, what a fellowship. Ooh. Oh, what a joy divine. Oh, every day I'm leaning on you
Hallelujah. Good morning, 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 good morning. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Wow, this is Youth Sunday. This is Youth Sunday where we celebrate our youth, uh, begin to speak to our young folks. And I feel a little vexed in spirit. He says, preach in season and out of season. And I'm just going to preach in season this morning as we begin to look forward to see how God is going to bless this morning. Turn your Bibles, if you would, to the book of Ephesians. Go to the book of Ephesians and go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. We've had the youth praise team and the mother has a job now that works on the weekend. So we're going to have to keep that family in prayer so we can get our youth folks back in here. Um, Praise team can begin to flow like it used to. And so let's keep that family in prayer that God will shift that. Uh, receive the same finances, but in a place where they can get the children back in school, uh, back in church, because truly, right now, the children need to be here. To hear, thus say the Lord. We're in the book of Ephesians. Go to the book of Ephesians. Go therein to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Father, I thank you for what you're about to do in this hour, what you're about to do in this atmosphere. How are you going to begin to change us and shift us and move us? In the mighty name of Jesus. What an awesome God we serve. You are a strong tower. And because of this morning, Lord, whoever is headed in this direction, I ask right now, God, that you move the obstacles out of the way that are to get here. Whoever's listening and having technical difficulties, I bind up. I bind it up right now, God, and send it back to the pits of hell. And they're ready to get on sight and hear your word. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done this far in this season. And we give you praise, honor, and glory this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. For this is a season of cultivating. And Father, help us now. Help me to preach this word this morning to cultivate your young folks in Jesus' name. And then, God, those that's young at heart, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. We're in the book of Ephesians. And go to chapter 4 of the book of Ephesians. As we begin to talk to you about Paul, as Paul began to teach to the Ephesians, and these people, they had God-like mannerisms. They had God-like characteristics, but they were denying the power of God. They were denying the strength of God and who he truly and really is. And so today I want to break it down to you to help you to fully understand that the power of God is the word of God and the word of God is the will of God, the power of God, the power of God. And so Ephesians uh, chapter 4, and if I had to give you a title for it today, it would be Teach Me Your Ways, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. And I back that up with Psalms 25 and verse 4. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. Lead me in your truth. And teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all the day. So as we begin to flow today, I want you to keep it in your mind. Uh, I know this is a sermon for the young folks, but those of us as young in heart, I'm coming at you this morning as well. Show me your ways, O oh Lord, and teach me your path. Lead me in your truth, God, and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, and on you I, I wait all the day. So that's Psalm 25 and verse 4. We are waiting on God to do some things in our lives. Some things you've been asking God for, he has not fulfilled. Some things you've been crying out to the Lord to change, he has not done it yet. Some things you've been asking God to remove from your life or enhance your life, he has not done yet. But he says, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord and be of good cheer. Wait, I say, on the Lord. He is going to bless you. But watch this now. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17 says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you shall no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertilities of their mind. So now we have to make a conscious effort to begin to change your mindset. 
to begin to realize that you can no longer run with the pack, but now you're going to have to be a leader of your pack, the pack that God is changing you. He says, having your understanding darkened, been alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that's in them, because of the hardness of their heart. Now, you know, as you begin to look at church, now people will stop coming to church. Church no longer has the significant as it used to have because of the darkening of the hearts of our people. And if we can darken the hearts of our children, the generation is headed towards not even coming to church at all. But the devil is a liar because we're going to have to keep pushing. We're going to have to keep encouraging. We're going to have to keep bringing them on in the house. Who's been past feeling, have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness with greediness. Now we know lasciviousness just simply means working out of control. Working out of control. You've been raised up in an environment that has all different types of corruption. And this corruption is causing you to want to gravitate in that direction because you feel like if I go in that direction, I can receive more. I can sell this product or, or I, I can do this thing. I can make finances and break to the home. But I'm telling you, you're moving in a direction that's called a seriousness and you're being totally out of control. But you have not so learned Christ because they're staying out of churches. Parents are not bringing the children to church. Parents are staying at home now, and they're not trying to get their children to church to learn the fullness of God. But in this house, in this church, in God's house, we have to push to get them here and push to get them so that they can fully understand. Because indeed you have heard him and have been taught by God, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your formal conduct, the old person who grew corrupt according to their deceitful lust. There's some things in you that has been taught to us from a young age. It's been taught to us, and as we've gotten older, we begin to drift into a different direction. But I want to bring you back today to help us to fully understand God will take you. God will help you. Proverbs 23, verse 6 tells us, My son, give, give me your heart, and let your eyes observe my ways. He said, give me your heart. Give me your heart. So I'm crying out today, and I'm encouraging you today, is that we give God our heart as you're in school, as you begin to move about through this environment, as you begin to move about through this community. Give God your heart so that God can transform you into the person that he needs you to be. God can transform you and give you the life that you need to become successful and you don't have to go stand on that corner or do anything that's out of the will and the purpose of God. That's going to land you into an incarceration standpoint, but, but, but let God guard your heart. 2 Timothy uh, 2 and, and, and 22 says that flee also youthful lust. You know, we talk about lust and we always move towards a physical standpoint. But lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, lust of what someone else else had, lust of trying to obtain what somebody else had, not because that's the gift in you, but because you are hoarding what someone else has. You want to have that in your house. So he said, flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But avoid, this is a part I truly love, but avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they're generate strife. I was listening to the news this morning, and I heard that uh, some young folks was at this house party, and, and they began to fight. And the police came over and uh, separated them and went about their business, and then the fight started back up. Because now, young folks think that the way to end a dispute is through fighting with your hands or fighting with a weapon. But I want to educate you that God says in 2 Timothy 2 and 22 that get away from foolish arguments and get away from the spirit that, that knowing that it's going to generate strife, knowing that it's going to cause you to fight, knowing that it's going to get you in such a situation that if you move in that direction strong enough, it's going to cause you when you become an adult that you can't get the things that you desire because you have a physical record. You can't get the things that you desire because you have a felony conviction. So the decision that you made at a house party at that particular night could come back and touch you years later in your life. So I want you to understand 
that Colossians 3 and verse 8 tells us, Colossians 3 and verse 8 tells us that now you must put off the old person. You must put off the old person. When you begin to put off all of these things, he says put off anger and put off wrath, put off malice, put off blaspheme, and then most definitely put filthy language out of your mouths. Oftentimes when we get angry, oftentimes we get mad, and the first thing we want to move towards is filthy language. But he says, put that out of your mouth. We want to go towards anger. Well, she made me mad. She shouldn't have pulled in front of me. He made me mad because of the things he said to me. But God says, put away anger. Put away malice. Put away blaspheme and filthy language out of your mouth. Why? Because God says that bring about condemnation towards your spirit. But here with, was, this is where I'm headed. This is where I'm headed. Praise the name of Jesus. Look at verse 23. Yeah, yeah. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's what that, that scripture right there would preach for at least an hour. Just that particular scripture. Why? Because he said, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. When we are being renewed in the spirit of our mind, we are constantly and consistently reminded that if God be for me, who can be against me? Amen. If, if God is working it out for me, I'm going to be okay. If God told me to do this, then I'm not going to worry about it. That particular scripture alone is telling us if you allow God to speak to you, if you allow God to move you, if you allow God to teach you, then you are going to be in the best hands ever. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on a new man which was created according to God and righteousness and true holiness. So when we when we begin to move and put on a new person, you heard pastors say that this is a season of cultivating. The season of March is a season of cultivating. This is where you take full control of who you are, take full control to make sure that your mind, that your heart, that your business, whatever you got yourself into, is being aligned with that of the uh, the uh, 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 Jeremiah 29 11 says I have a plan for you so that everything will be aligned with the plan of God and when your mind is aligned with the plan of God negative things happen to good people but the God you said will surrender you from all of it and pull you out of that so he says that you put on a new man which was created according to God and righteousness and true holiness there is a truth about each and every one of us. God says, when I made you, and he says, you came to ask me to save you, he said, I dealt you at that particular point by measure of faith. So there is a measure of faith in you that can change your situation, that can change your condition. You can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You can cast out the money spirit because that's what the power God has placed inside of you. And so you have that. But sometimes anger will cause us to move in a different direction. Sometimes wrath that somebody has placed upon us, has tried to take from us, has tried to hurt us, has tried to do something to us, that wrath will call us to move into a different direction. The malice will cause us to want to fight back and say, hey, you don't know who you're talking to. You don't know where I come from. I will do this to you and I will do that to you. But you got to understand, Satan is trying to pull you in a direction to mess you up and to tear you up and to break you down. But God says, I will strengthen you, I will build you up, and I will help you. If you were allowed Satan to do it, he will lead you down a road that mama doesn't re recognize you and daddy doesn't recognize you. Why? Because Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. When he begins to do that, he will push you in a direction that you don't even look the same no more. The devil is a liar. Therefore, put away lying, 25. Each one speak with Speak truth with his name. Speak truth. For we are members of one another. So as you begin to go through your conversations with people, as you begin to talk, as you begin to love on the Lord, even though the truth hurts sometimes, we have to be mindful that the truth is what God is looking for. Somebody, you ask someone the question, can you critique me? Can you tell me the truth about what you think about this? You have to be braced for the truth. You have to be braced for the truth. And so as you begin to realize the truth will set you free. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. He did this to me. He shouldn't have done it to me. I can't stand him. I hate him. I want to grab him around the neck, choke the life out of him. That's not God. That's Satan trying to push you in a direction. He says, be angry, but sin not. And so what he says is be angry, which means that you and 
I are going to get angry. You and I are going to become angry. You and I are going to become frustrated. But he said, do not sin in the midst of your frustration. Nor give peace or place to the devil. Because Satan is trying to take us out. He's trying to make you give up everything that you labored so hard to receive. He's trying to do it. And if you let him do it, he'll do it in a moment. He'll do it. Two to three to five minutes, he'll do it. Why? Because your boss got on your nerves, you raised up your voice, you got angry, and you just used this devil language called profanity, and you gave it to him. And what, what took you five minutes to tell him what you thought? Now you have no job. Now you're out seeking. Now you're trying to find a new job. And then now you got to put a resume why you lost that job when you were in school. And you and you thought that that person kept messing with you that you get up and, you, and not only jump on them and fight them, but you be getting to curse them out right in the midst of the classroom. And now you got to go to the principal's office and you got to bring mama and daddy in from off of their jobs. And it was something that you allowed to fly off the handle. But there is, a, there is complications and there is results of everything that we do. But God says, uh, don't allow anger, do not allow anger to be your direction, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, rather than let him labor, working with his hand. What is good? That he may have something to give him who has need. So there's a gift in you that God is saying that I have placed inside of you and if you allow your hands to move towards what I have told you to do that you will have more than enough to bless someone else Thank you. you will have more than enough to give to someone else but then here we have in 29 says but let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearer so there are some things there's some conversations that we could get in and we could get into it. We could have strong feelings about that conversation. And your strongness about that particular subject will make you go all in. Why? Because you truly believe what you're saying. But now, as that person begins to agitate you in the midst of that conversation, you are moving towards bad, uh, corrupt communication. Because you're trying to get your point across. You're trying to make them fully understand. But they don't fully understand because they're not operating from the same God. They're not operating. They're operating from this thing called Satan, from this thing called the devil. But you're operating from that of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So you got two people coming together, talking about a subject, believing in two different gods. That conversation is never going to end right. So sometimes you got to back away from it. And then he says, no, you should use necessary energy to edify that person and help them to understand that God before me who could be against me. Sometimes we just got to back away and just let them, uh, let them understand that the God that I serve, he's an awesome God. He's a right now God. He will help me get through this situation. Some of us as young in heart, I want you to fully understand that the God that you serve, he's keeping you young in heart because he's trying to still get the best out of you. He's trying to still get the most out of you. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed from the day of redemption. So the Holy Spirit we know is a spirit from God and it's to go before you and make the crooked path straight. So when you begin to realize that I have an advocate, I have an advocate called Jesus, and I have the Holy Spirit, this spirit will come inside of you. This spirit will speak to you. This spirit will help you. This spirit will move you in a direction to strengthen you and to destroy the adversary that's coming against you. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. But every tongue that comes against you, that rises up against you, shall be condemned. So we should have in our mind that God is for me. God is going to be with me. God is going to help me. And when you keep that on your mind, whatever you call yourself to get into, God is there right there with you to help you. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit, he says. But watch this part. Watch this part. It got so much involved. This could preach a whole sermon by itself. Verse 31 says, But let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And malice is just simply loud quarreling. You're a fussy person. You just you just have to get that last word in. Well, what's going to happen to you is things are going to come out of your mouth that you're going to have to repent for later. But then he says to be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ also have forgiven us. Leviticus 19 and 28 tells us that you shall not make any cuts on your body 
for the dead or tattoos yourself, for I am the Lord. So often nowadays, there's it's a trend happening now. Uh, uh, you have to get a tattoo of whatever saying, whatever your desire is. You have to get a tattoo. But it says in Leviticus 19 and 28, you shall not make any cuts on your body for the dead or tattoos yourself for I am the Lord. Because people was using tattoos as a way of showing that you belong to Satan. It was a satanic worship. And so he says, do not allow yourself to do that. And so when you, before you got saved, you might have done it. But now I'm asking you now to look at it before you go in that direction. But you know what? My, my mom's died and I just want to put a saying on her when he says don't do it. But, but if I love this person and, and I want to do this for this person, so I want to put a saying as a reminder. But he says in Leviticus 19 and 28, don't do it. I was looking at a young man this morning. You know, I got up early this morning. Yeah, about, it's about to become spring time and uh, I'm, I'm back to building stuff again so I got the lowers this morning brother bear I had them I had them two apple was in my hand I just feel real good man I thought that was somebody but it was early this morning y'all I got there and uh, when, when I was walking inside those there was a young man and he was walking towards me and, and I thought he had paint on his face because one side of his face and this side of his face, I thought, you know, uh, sometimes in the military they would tell you put camouflage on your face so that you could, you know, blend into the environment that you're in so that uh, we're under attack that you would not be seen. And so I'm thinking that the young man had, you know, some type of camouflage on because uh, it could be that he came in, uh, they was doing some type of drill, he had to get in and, and replace something. I'm thinking he had camouflage on, but when I got closer to him, I realized the whole side of his face was tattooed. I'm like, wow, what courage it would take to realize you're never going to look the same again because you cannot take it off. You can kind of replace it, but it's going to always be something as a reminder there. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I understand what you said when you said Leviticus 19 and 28. And then I seen uh, on TV where this young lady had everything about her was tattooed tattooed all over the place and so now we have young folks you want to put a tattoo at the lower part of your back and then you want to sag your pants uh, uh, so that someone can see the tattoo uh, but but now you're revealing things and I'm, I'm crying out to you this morning to say don't do that and then when you want to put your nice dress on and your, and your nice dress is really nice but you got a whole sleeve of tattoos and I, I'm not coming to you all this morning to try to uh, disrespect with your choice, but I'm just simply preaching the Bible. And, and, and some of the young men, they think now that in order to look courageous, in order to look even better, when they take their shirt off, they got a whole tattoo covering their whole body. But, but I'm crying out this morning, young folks, that it's a trend happening, and this trend is not all that about God. He said, don't do it, for I am the Lord. But Psalms uh, Psalms 101 verse 3 tells us that I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. And so if this thing is wicked, God says set nothing wicked before your eyes. So I'm crying out again, young folks, as you begin to look at your cell phone and you begin to see pop-ups. Don't follow those pop-ups because it's causing you to move in a direction of your eye gate. And in your eye gate, you're going to begin to see things. It is so easy now to go to Google and Google anything you want to see and begin to see the fullness of it. And for you know it, you're following it. Back in my day, we didn't have that. We had the flip phones. And when we had those black phones in your room, in your house, you know, those black phones that are cord, you couldn't go but what? six feet, and now you're at the end of that black cord, and everybody can hear your conversation. But now, oh man, you can text, and then you can get on that thing, and, and be in Africa, or be in Zambia, wherever, on your phone. You can go anywhere you want on your phone. And so that's causing you to become curious. But see, that technology is not for you to move in a direction of wickedness, but it's causing you to begin to flow in a direction of positiveness that you can help somebody or be a help of you as God has placed this gift inside of you to use the technology that he has provided for us. And so he doesn't want us to do that because he says in Psalms uh, 103 verse, uh, Psalm 101 verse 4, he said, A perverse heart shall depart from me, and I shall not know wickedness. And so as we begin to get on our cell phones and you begin to look at that phone and you got all kind of stuff 
in front of you, you have to be mindful. Though you may be by yourself at home, uh, nobody's around you, God sees what you're looking at. God sees what you're doing. And he says, I see what you're doing, but I want you to get away from that because it's causing you to become unrighteous. And see, some of the things that we have been exposed to in a growing up is why we're turning in that direction now. But because some things are so accessible, we have to realize that children nowadays have so many opportunities to move in the direction of pleasure. To move in a direction of pleasure. When I was a young man, we didn't have that type of uh, environment. We didn't have that type of usage. We didn't have that type of strength. So now we have to keep praying for our young folks that they don't fall prey of Satan and cause them to begin to react based on what they're seeing. React based on what they're doing. Even on TV now, uh, the, the, the products are selling based on the flesh of somebody else. And so... We, we got to be mindful of our kids on TV. We got to be mindful of sending them to the movies. There's so much now that's so prevalent to our children that we have to be mindful to keep them in the right direction. That's why the Bible says, train up our children in the way that they should go. And when they get old, they want to depart from it. And I know that young fella sitting over there in the elder's lap, it's, a, it's, it's hard to say how this world is going to be from a technology standpoint when he get a teenager. Why? Because... Technology is moving so quickly now, moving so quickly now, and they even got GPS that you can put on somebody's car and follow them to follow them right to the very point that they are, and they have no clue that you're following. That's how strong technology is. You can put a little camera as far as, far as my thumb into someone's home, and they don't even know that you planted it there, and you get them your cell phone and monitor that home inside and out. Why? Because that's how technology has caused things. And everywhere you go now, there's always going to be a camera somewhere watching you. And so when you begin to do things and think nobody sees, that camera is watching you. Back in the day, we would say Big Brother got his eyes on you, but now that camera has his eyes on you. So that's why it's imperative and important that we as Christian people have to walk upright intentionally so that we begin to show that light to God, that we will do the right thing regardless of what's coming against us. When you begin to do that, God will bless you. God will work it out. He will help you. He will give you your heart desire. And he will begin to flow in your direction so strong. So as we go through this season of cultivating, young folks, I want you to begin to cultivate the strength in you and cultivate the gift in you and cultivate the talent in you so that when you become an older person, when you become a young adult or, or older adult, that the gift that you lay place now, the foundation that you lay place now will be a strong foundation that you can stand on later on. Don't wait till you get 61 and 62 to try to lay a strong foundation. Though you can't do it, but while you're still young, lay that foundation now. Get godly counsel. Don't just seek counsel from anybody, but get godly counsel so that God can strengthen you. God can work it out. And that person that you're getting counsel from, let them begin to talk to you from a biblical standpoint, from the Bible, from the scripture, what God said, so that you will begin to move in a way like never before. Praise the name of Jesus. Young yes, folks are trying everything. And they, they, they in school trying everything, and they're in the gym trying everything, and they're behind the bleachers trying everything. But I want to I want to raise up our children today that they don't have to they don't want to try everything, but they'll be they'll be kept until they got married. They'll be kept until the power of God is flowing through them. They want to try everything, whether it be uh, 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 trying a new drug that's coming out. And and now the new drug is when I was a young man, you could buy marijuana and it would be something that you grew in your yard or uh, somebody else's yard will go. But now they got this drug called fentanyl. And this fentanyl will make you higher, quicker, faster, but it's killing a lot of people. Why are young folks? is trying to want to try this particular drug, but this drug is killing us. And so, and I keep saying, and you've heard me say, there should be no more new crap here in nobody's family. Because everybody has an example of a person that tried it and it moved them in a direction that you don't want to be. So today, young people, I want to just encourage you to say, ask God what your next step should be. Talk to the Lord and ask him how to fix you, how to help you. And ask him to keep you from the avenues of addiction. 
Because this avenue of any type of addiction, if it's not reading the Bible, if you're not addicted to praying, if you're not addicted to fasting, then this addiction is trying to move you in a direction that's not of God. So if you, if you want to be addicted to something, be addicted to Jesus. Begin to call on him every chance you get. Begin to call him in the morning, noon, and night. Begin to admonish him for how great he is and what he's done for you. If you're in a classroom and you can't think of the test scores or the test answers, begin to talk to the Lord. He said the Holy Spirit will bring back everything. He said he will quicken your remembrance. So he will do it. He will will help you out. He will strengthen you. He will give you heart desire. So whatever it is that you desire from Jesus, he has equipped us with the Holy Spirit to help us receive everything that we desire. Today, I want you to fully understand and do inventory of you and say, whatever it is in me, God, that I need to get rid of, whatever in me, God, is not about you, whatever I have allowed myself to become entangled in, God, forgive me right now and Help me to get on the right state. Why? Because God, there's a power in me that has not yet been touched. He said, your eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard, neither has it entered into your heart what God has in store for you. So there is a positive thing about you that God is trying to pull out of you. There's a positive thing in you. God is trying to strengthen you. There's some things in you God is trying to get out of because your gifts shall make room for you. Teach me your ways, O oh Lord, that I will do the things that you desire of me. Teach me your ways, O oh Lord, that I will be successful in this failing economical system. Teach me your ways, O oh Lord, that when the Antichrist get here, it's already in the world, according to 1 John. When the Antichrist get here, it will not hurt me because I'm rooted, grounded, and embedded in you, God. Yes. Teach me your ways, O oh Lord, that I will do right things all the time. Teach me your ways, God, that when I do get angry, I will not sin against thee. Yes. Yes. Teach me your ways, God, that when affliction begin to happen to me, and when things begin to come against me. I know how to pray. I know how to lay hands. I have faith in you. God, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. Help me with my unbelief. Help me with my unbelief, God, because there's some things that I want to believe in. I don't see true manifestation. I've been praying for it. It has not happened to me yet, but God, help me with my unbelief. It's not that I don't believe, but I just need to see manifestation. If you stay your mind on Jesus, he said, I will yes. help you. I will strengthen yes. you. He said in Hebrews 10 and 35, don't you lose your yes. confidence in me. It will bring reward and recompense. Hebrews 10 35 says, I will bless you. I will help you. I will work it out for yes. you. In the mighty name of Jesus, my yes. brothers and my sisters, I am asking you this morning to say, okay, you've been praying, but don't you quit. Don't you give up. You've been asking God to bless you, but don't you stop now because you have not seen it. Galatians 6 and 9 says, do not grow weary in well-doing. For in due season, you're going to reap the harvest if you faint not. So don't you quit right here. Satan wants you to quit. He wants you to give up. He wants you to get tired. He wants fatigue to be your way out. And then for you know I'm too tired to do anything. But you're young. He says, you're youth. You're in your youth. Help me now, God, to do your will, to do your purpose, to do what you desire of me to do. And I'm, I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, God wants to bless you the more. God wants to give you a heart desire. He says, I take pleasure in the prosperities of my people. So if God takes pleasure in us being blessed. He's going to take pleasure in you becoming successful. You can do it. You can make it happen. But it's in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in this world. And this is not just good talk. This is the word of God. Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Now to him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all that you may ask or think, according to the powers already working in you. So there is a power, and if you exercise that power, you will become successful. There is a power in you. If you call upon that power, work that power, and use that power, you will be successful. There's a power inside of you. If you would use that power and work that power, whatever your health can conditions is. God said, I wish above all that you prosper and be in good health, yes. even as your soul shall prosper. So whatever that power is, it will bring you good health. It will bring you success. It will raise you among your people. It will put you in a nation where you are the lender and not the borrower. Yes, you Lord. shall be the head and not the tail. Yes. You shall be above and not the Lord. Why? Because God says, I love you. God says, I want to strengthen you. God says, I need 
needs you. My God, how can God say he needs us? Because he said in John 15 and verse 7, if you abide in me and my word remain in you, I'll give you your heart Thank desire. You. What is it that you desire? What is it that you got to have? What is it that you need? Keep your faith in Jesus. God, help yes, me Lord. with my yes, unbelief. Lord. Help me, God, yes, to just stay on point. Help me to stay on track. Sometimes we got to turn that radio off. We got to turn that phone down. And we got to begin to say, okay, God, this is what I feel. And this is what I think. Hear me now. God is big enough for you to feel like you can tell your heart desire. Some of it might not be good. But God is big enough to hear you. He's big enough to hear what you have to say. Don't blaspheme. Just tell him the truth. Your heart is hurting. You don't understand why things keep happening the way. You think people are coming at you in some type of way. You're doing the best that you can. God is big enough to hear that. All of our prayers is not going to be that of a flower bed of ease. Some of our prayers is going to be through desperation. Some of our prayers is going to be through frustration. Some of our prayers is going to be through depression. Some of our prayers is going to be from a hatred standpoint. Some of our prayers is going to be from a strife standpoint. She keep getting on my nerves, God. I'm going to do something to her. We got to be open and honest with God. If that boy do that thing one more time, Lord, I'm going to do something to him. We got to be open and honest with God. He's big enough to receive it. When you begin to be open and honest with God, know that he's going to be open and honest with you. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I will repay. So in closing, I want you to take inventory of you today, and I want you to look directly in your heart and say, what is it that I can change for the betterment of God? What is it that I can change that get the most out of my life for God? Because the Bible says, all have sinned and fell short of the glory. Today, I want you to recognize you, you just say, God, I repent. Forgive me. I won't do that again. He says he's a reward of those that diligently seek him. So if you're seeking God, you have all the answers. If you're seeking God, you have all the answers. Just call upon him. He said, I'll hear you, and I'll help you, and I'll work it out for you. If you do that, teach me your ways, O oh Lord, and I know I'll be successful. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. This is a day that the Lord has made. Thank you, Lord. Let us rejoice and be glad. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, if you're not saved and you want to be saved, come down to the altar and let the Lord move on you like never before. He will do it. He will work it out. He will give you your heart desire. In the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, if you just stand with me, if you can, or just stay where you are, I want to pray, I want to pray, I want to pray over us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you, Lord. I thank you, God. Teach us your ways, God, that we will know that it's you. We won't sin against you. Teach us your ways, God, that when things are coming against us, we're going to run to you even more. Teach us your ways, God, that we will become more successful. Prosperity will be there for us. Teach us your ways, God. As you has placed us, God, as the parents of the young folks, that we will be able to teach them and move them in a direction that's pleasing in the sight of you. So teach us your ways, God, that we will not sin against thee. And all of these things that's coming against us, God, in this atmosphere, help us to war them off. We know Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But you said you came to give life and give it more abundantly. So we'll see seeking life right now, God. We're seeking help. We're seeking strength from you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, if there's one sick among us, God, I'm laying hands on them in the atmosphere. I'm laying hands on them through the spirit realm, Lord God, that whoever it is, God, you touch it from the crown of their head to the sword of their feet, God. Their entire body is going to be healed by you. Their entire body is going to be strengthened by you. Their minds are going to be open because of you. In the mighty name name of Jesus. Whatever the element is, God, I bind it up right now in the name of Jesus and send it back to the pits of hell where it comes from that your people shall be healed. Your people shall be saved. Your people shall be strengthened. Your people shall be like in like Why? Because you're God. Woo! Because you're God. You can do exceedingly the pudding. Why? Because you're God. And because you're God, 
Thank you for what you're about to do in this atmosphere. Bless us, God, and keep us covered under your blood. This do now, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. All right, we're going to shift. We're going to shift. We're going towards um, tithes and offering. And, and then after that, we're going towards testimonies. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. That He will bless us. He will strengthen us. He will work it out for us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Rebecca, don't don't go before you talk to me. There's some questions I need to answer. In the name of Jesus. So we give God the praise, the honor, and the glory this morning. Uh, we just thank Him. Listen, if you want to be a blessing uh, where you are, if you're not sitting in here, you can go 77977, and, and on your phone, you would go EHGIF. Text that, it will send you to a link, and then that link will give you options. If you say, Pastor, is there another way? Yes. Go dollar sign 3177, lowercase j, and uh, put where you want the finances to flow, and it will get right there. In the mighty name of Jesus. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're about to do um, to the growth of your people here this morning through the financial gifts. In the mighty name of Jesus. So whatever God has placed upon your heart to do, that's what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whatever he's placed upon your heart to do, that's what you do. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the name. Praise his name. 77977. E-H give. And when you do that, God will bless you. He will bless you. Uh, dollar sign 3177 and he will bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Go with me in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, I thank you for who you are, for what you've done. You. God, I thank you that your mercy shall endure thank forever. You, Father, yes, you said give and it shall be given back to us. Yes, so Lord. we're giving God on the faith of you that you're going to bless us, that you're yes, going to work it out, that you're going to keep us covered under your blood. Yes, Not from the obedience of your people, God. Strengthen their purchasing power, yes, your financial yes, purchasing power, God, that they're able to become millionaire status in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, and this failing economical system and this failing bank system, God, you're going to strengthen strengthen your people finances to show them that you're God. And so I stand here now, God, with the people that's given online and the people that's placed it in this basket. I'm standing here, God, telling them that you're going to bless them, God, in a mighty way to keep their mind stayed on you. Yes, and she they're not going to worry about how they're going to pay a bill. They're not going to worry about where they're going to get the finances from, yes, God, Lord. because you said you'd give it to us. And because of their obedience, Yes, God, I'm asking you now to touch it right now. Yes, and she was my name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. All right, we're about to close. I'm trying to get you out. I'm trying to get you out. All right, does anyone have a testimony before we close? All right, I have one. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, uh, I have a vehicle that needed tires. And I took the vehicle to a place, but the place that they uh, switched the tires out, I brought four new tires, take the old ones off, put the new ones on, that I got to this place and they're on the outside. And they had replaced two of them, uh, and then it began to rain. It began to, the wind was blowing, they had forecast rain, and they still had the other two sides to do. And so I stood and I said, okay, Lord, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, and asked the Lord to stop the rain. Even though it was drizzling, the wind was blowing very hard. I prayed and, and asked the Lord to stop this rain because I need this vehicle fixed. And I know that uh, in about 45 minutes, they was going to close. This situation would have had to go towards Monday. And then I would have had to get a record to take that vehicle back to my home or leave it in their gates and worry about it if it's safe or not. I just was praying to God and saints, he stopped the rain. Lord. Lord. Praise the name yeah. of Jesus. And the drizzle was coming down, but after I finished praying, it just stopped. Thank I said, wow. I felt some kind of way then. <laughs> I felt some kind of way, but he stopped the rain. 
and uh, and he didn't allow it to come back. And he even had forecast um, it was going to rain hard that particular day, and and I felt it coming down. I began to cry out to Jesus, and he he prevented the rain. On another hand, um, I don't know why I did it. I got a bad habit of doing now. Just got to be mindful of it because I do so much stuff, and so my mind just be everywhere. But anyhow, I left my truck key on. And when I left the truck key on, I went back that particular night, maybe four hours later, uh, and my truck was ticking. <laughs> well, the battery was dead. And so me and Marcellus, we out here holding the light while I'm trying to jump the car, jump the battery from my, my wife's car, and it, and it happened. And so the next day, uh, driving that particular truck, or when I get to a place, a stoplight or whatever, the truck will turn off wherever I was, it was turning off. And so I called this uh, record dealer and said, can I bring the truck in? They said, yeah, you can bring it in. So they set me a date of two days later. And so we made an appointment to get there. We made an appointment to get there. First lady followed me there with the truck. And when I get there, it says, we do not work on that brand of truck. Oh, man, I was frustrated. So I called the brand of truck that it works in. They said, well, we can't get you in until the 3rd of April. No, man, I need this thing to happen now. I need it to happen now. Well, on the way back, the Lord spoke to me. He says, change your battery. Hmm. Well, the truck's running. And, and I know uh, from halfway being a mechanic, not a good one, uh, halfway being a mechanic, that if it has enough cranking power in that battery, it should have enough storing power to keep that vehicle running. But it wasn't. It was killing the alternator. So I heard the Holy Spirit, and then I went and changed the battery. Lord, that battery was expensive. Well, I had to do it. And so <laughs> I, changed, I changed the battery, y'all. I haven't had no problem since. Praise the name. And I was trying to give these people my money. Hey, man, fix this vehicle. But the Holy Spirit promptly said, change your battery. And so I took the battery out, took the auto zone. They said, yes, you have cranking power, but you don't have restoring power. And so they did a charge on that battery, and it said dead battery. Okay, I take your word for it. Truly take the Holy Spirit word for it. I got that battery repaired, and I don't have no more problems with the vehicle. Praise the name of Jesus. Thanks. So God will bless you if you just stay cursed. I didn't get angry. I didn't get frustrated. I kept giving it to him, and he worked it out for me. So that's why I'm telling you all today. Keep giving it to God. He says, whatever you're going through, he says, I am mindful of it, and I will help you. So after he stopped that rain, I was like, what did he do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't pay any attention. Yeah, I was, I was happy about that little situation. But anyway, the tire got fixed and everything, and the car's home now. So we give God the praise. Anybody have a testimony? Yes, sir. Yeah, my grandson, the tall one to be back there with me. Yes, sir. You know, when you be praying and stuff sometimes, you know, about when you're in school doing that stuff, he was telling me, say, that's what I do, Papa. I pray and stuff. So he was having some issues with, uh, well, he thought he was going to have an issue with one of his tests he had. He said he always prayed before his test. Okay. He got 97 on it. Oh, wow. That's what I'm talking about. That's the faith that I'm talking about. That's how powerful we are, y'all. Yes, Lord. We don't realize it, but he will. Wow. Will that be another? Tell him thank you for me. Yeah. And next time I see him, I'm going to tell him that myself, too. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else before we go? All right. If I get you to stand, please, we'll go. God, this is a powerful God that we serve. Yes. He's a thank God you. all by himself. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you and I thank you right now for who you are. For how you bless us, how you work in our hearts, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, for you are a powerful God. And we are reminded, God, that you sent Jesus here as our example. So with that, Lord God, we go into him. You said no one can get to the Father except through the Son. So because of that, we're calling on you, Jesus, this yes, morning, Lord. to help us, to strengthen yes. us, to enlighten yes. us. Yes, In the mighty yes, name of Jesus, yes, Jesus, Lord. teach us the ways of God. Yes, teach yes, us his Lord. ways so that yes. we would know what to do in every instance. Yes, In the mighty yes, name of Jesus. Lord. So thank you for healing. Thank you for prosperity. Thank, thank you for wisdom. Thank, thank you for honesty. Thank and you. thank you for truth. Thank, thank you, God, Lord. that when we get angry, we don't move towards that language of Satan. But we move towards the language of you to forgive yes, and forget. Lord. In the mighty name yes, of Jesus. So thank you now, God, for how you want to bless us, Father, as yes, we leave here. Behind all mechanical 
fair. You let no hurt, harm, or danger come to us, but keep us covered under your blood. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, and go in peace. Thank you.